Hi you guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. This is the part two of my video series on lust and how to overcome it and how you can't do it on your own because lust is like a super powerful demon. Today I just have a lot more tips for you guys, uh, just practical advice for everyday, day-to-day -day living, day-to-day -day situations where you need a little extra help, uh, whatever the situation may be. You can really be anywhere, anytime and be tempted by lust. So it can come as a surprise to you and you need to be prepared. But before I get started into today's video, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm so blessed to have you watching my channel. My name is Rio and I talk about God and how God changed my life. And um, if you wanna hear more about how God changed my life, check out my video. It's called Why Mindfulness Doesn't Work. And that's the change that happened in me that led to my life with Jesus now. And I have never been happier in my life. We need to change the way that we think about things. We need to change what we seek on an everyday basis. And if you're just living for pleasure, you're living for yourself, you're only living for money, then you're not living for God because in the Bible, Jesus commands us, he tells us that someone who follows him must die to the self and pick up their cross every day to follow him. This is my first tip, die to the self. So what does it mean to die to the self? What it means is that, you know how when you get baptized, you go underwater and you come back up. Well, that's a symbol. Going down into the water is the symbol of dying and raising back up again is coming back to life just how Jesus came back to life and that's the life of a Christian in a nutshell every single day you're going to come across temptations you're going to want to give up you're going to be lonely and want to sin you're going to see a donut and want to eat it but know that you're trying to put your health first you're going to see drugs or alcohol that you might have used to be really into and you're gonna have to say no and what that's going to take is dying to the self so death to the self it sounds bad but it is just the mentality that you need to have because the flesh wants to pull us into sin the flesh doesn't care about going to heaven because the flesh won't go to heaven with you only your soul will go to heaven what the flesh wants to do is mess up your journey and your path so what you need to do is deny the flesh and um think of it as dying to the self. So when I was being tempted, God kept putting that phrase into my mind, death to the self, death to the self. So everything that we do for Christ is a sacrifice for Christ. Because Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. When you're being tempted, you need to keep that phrase in your mind to remind yourself of the importance of not putting your own desires first. Instead, having a heart for things that are good having a heart like Jesus did. So craving good things. What are the good things in your life that bring you joy and satisfaction? Take pleasure in those things instead of taking pleasure in things that drag you back into sin. For instance, hanging out more with your family, hanging out more with your friends, um, reading a book, watching a movie. These are things that are not destructive habits, but they still bring us joy. Tip number two is getting into your Bible every day and going to church every Sunday. These are two things that surprisingly a lot of Christians actually don't do them, which baffles my mind because if we want to keep growing and if we want to really destroy sin and we want to destroy temptation and lust, then we need to be constantly growing closer to God. I think you actually have to live it, what you talk about. You have to live for Jesus and you have to be constantly putting him first in order to truly understand what it means to be a Christian. You cannot just, you know, occasionally go to church. You can't just have these lukewarm feelings about Jesus because Jesus died for you and that's such a dramatic act. That's not like, oh, Jesus, like he kind of liked you. Jesus loved you so much that he carried this extremely heavy cross on his shoulders all the way up to where he was crucified. He literally died for you on the cross and because he did that for us, we have the burden of living for him. Every single day or whenever you're about to go and be tempted, let's say that there's someone at the gym 
who you know that you shouldn't like, but you have a massive crush on them. Just for an example, every single time you go to the gym, you're going to want to armor up, so to speak. Uh, get into your word, play some Christian music, have a mind for Jesus, be in that zone so that once you go into the gym, you will be able to recognize when you are feeling temptation and you'll be able to recognize when someone not so good for you is trying to get your number or trying to take you home and you'll be able to say no thanks. It doesn't have to be rude, just no thanks. It's really a mindset more than anything because if we have a mindset that is weak and it's not focused on Christ all the time, then we are just as likely as anyone else to fall into sin. Don't forget that. Even if you've accepted Jesus into your heart, you're still prone to forgetting about your love for him and pursuing sin instead. It's like walking on a tightrope. Any step, either direction, can have you plummeting to your death. But if you keep your mind straight ahead at Christ and you see the cross in your mind, you cannot mess up and you cannot fall to your death. So that's kind of like life and it takes strength. It takes this core strength. It helps train your mind to deal with adversity and adversity, you're going to come across it in your life. But if you have a mind for Christ, then you'll be able to push through to the end and withstand temptation and withstand feeling tired or hopeless or depressed or anxious. So that's really the beauty of Christ is that even as we walk through the valley of darkness, as we are walking through dark times and through challenges in our lives and through feelings of depression and anxiety, if we have a mind for Christ, we will always feel our spirits, our souls being, being renewed constantly by him because he already made the sacrifice for us so we don't have a burden anymore and that's the beauty of him the more you draw close to him the more love you will feel in your life and the more joy you will feel the more you will know your identity in the world and what you're meant to do to serve him and his kingdom and it's such a beautiful thing so he armors us he makes us strong he's the one who fortifies us he gives us strength constantly and so turn to him constantly in order to always be strong point number three is um, replace lust with respect if you're lusting after someone that means that you don't respect them you don't really care about getting married to them you just care about going to bed with them so going back to the gym analogy if you're there's someone at the gym you find really attractive and every time you go into the gym you just are constantly thinking about that person in that way, then you're not respecting them and you're not respecting yourself and you're not respecting your future covenant with your future husband and you're not respecting their future covenant with their future wife or however genders, you know, whatever. So there's a giant lack in respect because when we're focused on ourself, we can't be focused on God. You're focusing on one or the other. Anytime you notice a lustful thought arise, replace that feeling with respect for that person. Instead of thinking about that, think about how you respect that person. You want to see them in a happy marriage and you respect yourself and you want to see yourself in a happy marriage. By replacing that feeling, you can still like that person just in a different way. Like you want to see them happily married and you want to see them doing well in life. That means not destroying their lives by sinning. There's this quote on my wall that says, God is faithful. He will not let you te be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. That is the nature of our God. He will never let you be tempted beyond what you can stand. So when we're, you know, grappling with this feeling, we're overcomplicating it because Christ already won. He already won for us. So the minute that you turn your thoughts to him, the fight is won. It's over for the devil. What lust does not want you to have is an honest, personal relationship with God in which you vent all of your temptations and your frustrations to him and all your sinful thoughts 
Lust wants to keep your heart a secret from God. But the minute that you turn to God and you treat God like he's your diary, that you write all the most dark, deep secrets of your heart onto. Think about how much that elevates your relationship. So if you're going through lust right now, if you're battling that demon right now, you guys, it's because you're meant to be leveling up with God right now. And lust is, he's got a death grip on your ankle, just trying to drag you back down. Cause he does not want you to be that personal with God. He does not want you to admit that you have a sinful heart. This is the devil trying to hold on to our pride trying to hold on to our ego and our fear, really, to get closer to God. If you're afraid of getting closer to God, just remember that God made you. He already knows all of the ways in which you fall short because the Bible says that nobody is perfect except for Jesus. Nobody was ever or will ever be perfect except for Jesus. So take that weight off your shoulder. There's nobody expecting you to be perfect here. After I overcame this spirit and i'm still in the progress of overcoming it i'm not gonna lie there are times when i feel tempted but the point is is that i'm constantly keeping my mind on christ once i started focusing on christ instead uh what happened is that i reached this whole new level with god where i don't feel afraid anymore to be super personal with him and i feel like we are closer than ever and i honestly feel like now I can see myself in a way that I didn't see myself before. I understand myself and I have a greater understanding of my identity in Christ and I have a greater understanding of the areas where I fall short and the areas where I do great. It's like I'm finally seeing an honest version of myself for the first time and I can see the way that others perceive me too which is something I was never able to do before now. So it's kind of like God has given me a mirror and I love this new level of being able to see with clarity. Once you get rid of the demon of lust, this veil is lifted off of your eyes and you can really see things as they are. You can see people for what they are and you can see yourself for what you are. I just wanna leave you guys with a prayer. God, I pray that the person who is watching this video right now, that you will just work miracles in their life, God, and bring in some really amazing new miracles and some really amazing new blessings for them, God. And I just pray that you would bring them closer to you. And I pray that you would help them in their journey to overcoming the demon of lust and break all chains to the demonic right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Break all chains to the demon of lust right now in Jesus' name. And break all chains to addiction, God, and break all chains to pain and to anxiety and to depression and to suicidal thoughts and break all chains to their past that are tying them down, keeping them from progressing and being closer to you, God. Um, set them free, God. We know you can do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks you guys for watching another one of my videos. I love knowing that I brought someone just a little bit closer to God every single time someone watches my videos. Have a great day you guys and I'll see you in the next video.